MSDS stands for Material Safety Data Sheet. And what these sheets are are documents that every manufacturer of a chemical uh, is required to furnish to retailers that are selling their product or even to the direct end consumer. Um, this document is going to provide information about the chemical, about its appearance, um, recognizable features, physical and chemical properties, but also information about how to safely store it, uh, how to handle it safely, and what to do in case of uh, overexposure to the chemical. Now every MSDS is going to have a slightly different appearance because different manufacturers will format it differently. However, each MSDS typically shares the same sections. Uh, again, the layout might vary slightly, but all the same information is there. Now not every section is going to be pertinent to the chemistry student, but um, Nonetheless, it's important to know what all is, is involved there. We're going to highlight just some of the important sections uh, for our work in the chemistry lab. First of all, in the first section, you're going to have uh, prominently displayed the name of the chemical, uh, the name of the material, and then followed by the uh, information, contact information about the um, company that furnished it, their contact information, their phone number. Also, the Chemtrek emergency phone number, and that's sort of analogous to the Mr. Yuck poison control hotline. Uh, if you have an issue with a chemical, if you need to get immediate assistance with how to deal with a particular chemical, you can call this Chemtrek phone number. It's staff 24-7. In the second section, uh, this is going to give you information, more detailed information about the uh, substances and the material itself. Uh, it's going to let you know if it's a pure substance, just one thing, or if it's a mixture of materials. If it's a pure substance, uh, then you will also see a CAS number. CAS stands for Chemical Abstract Service. And the Chemical Abstract Service number is kind of like a Social Security number for the chemical. Uh, every substance has its own unique CAS number. Mixtures, on the other hand, don't have these CAS numbers because, by definition, they aren't pure. All right, it's actually a, a mixture of different substances. What this section will give you for a mixture, though, is it will tell you all the individual ingredients, plus it will tell you what their proportion is, what their percentage composition is. The third section is important because it clues you in as to what hazards you need to watch out for. And again, these MSDS are fairly concise documents, usually no more than two pages. And so they, they squeeze a lot of information into a very small space. So they're going to use key words. And it's important to be familiar with these terms like irritant. Uh, something's a skin irritant means it may cause redness or itching or some sort of inflammation, irritation. Um, if it's a respiratory irritant, it means it's going to cause breathing difficulties if you, if you inhale it. Um, toxic means that uh, it's going to cause some ill health effects, be them short-term, acute, or uh, more long-term chronic effects. Something is corrosive, it means that it's going to wear away the material by chemical action. Typically, the term corrosive refers to inorganic material like metals. Um, if something is going to eat away at biological tissue, sometimes the term caustic is used instead. Um, flammable means that the substance is going to uh, be able to be ignited and burn fairly easily. And the term poison is pretty straightforward. You see that, you know, you should be very careful with it. Um, poison is similar to toxic. It's going to cause ill health effects, but generally it's uh, a much shorter term uh, type, a more acute type of health effect. In this same section and, and perhaps further down in the firefighting measures section, uh, you may find uh, a familiar diamond structure, the NFPA diamond, uh, or uh, a listing of hazards, uh, numerical scale uh, hazards at a glance. And these are generally shorthand forms to just give a very quick snapshot uh, assessment of the hazards that are presented by a particular chemical. Usually it's a numerical ranking from 0 to 3 or 1 to 4. The higher the number, the more hazardous the material is. With the NFPA diamond, the blue diamond refers to um, health hazards. The red diamond refers to flammability hazards. The yellow diamond refers to uh, reactivity hazards. And the white diamond at the bottom uh, presents uh, usually a pictogram uh, indicating any sort of special hazard that's associated with the substance. For instance, in the diagram that you see, um, you've got a W with a line through it. That means that it is not compatible with water. Um, you may see 
um, a hand that looks like part of it's been you know eaten away and something dripping on it. That's the universal sign for something that's corrosive. Um, if you see a picture of like a it looks like a dead tree and a fish that has an X in it, like it looks like it's a dead fish, um, that means that it is a substance that is uh, poisonous to aquatic life. So there's all different kinds of uh, pictograms that may show up in that bottom diamond uh, that are meant to communicate a specific hazard. Section four, this is going to tell you what to do um, if somebody does have an inadvertent exposure, be it you or somebody else. Uh, depending on the type of exposure, it's going to give you different instructions. Um, you know, for instance, when you ingest something, sometimes you want to induce vomiting, sometimes you don't. Um, so it's important to look to this section, especially if there is an accidental exposure. The next couple of sections really don't apply to most of the work that we would do uh, in the chem lab. There's firefighting measures, things that first responders would need to know uh, if there were a major fire uh, you know, in and around the chemistry lab. Um, section 9 is another really important section because this is going to be the section that's going to describe the material in terms of its physical and chemical characteristics. Um, it will tell you what it looks like, what state it's in, does it have an odor, um, is it colored. It's going to tell you things like what is it soluble in, what is it not soluble in. Um, it may tell you about its density or specific gravity. Those two are, are pretty closely linked to one another. Um, so it could also give you its chemical formula or its molecular weight. So that's more of the physical descriptors and, and data that you may find useful in uh, calculations dealing with that substance depending on what the lab is. Um, Section 11 then is very closely related to section 3, the hazards information. Um, the toxicological information section gives you more quantified data rather than you know, qualitative data. Um, section 3 just tells you, hey, it's toxic. Um, the toxicological section is going to tell you more of this is exactly how toxic it is. Um, you'll see a number of values, concentrations listed, uh, for instance, LD50. Um, what this means is, is that when the toxicity of the substance was tested, they used some organism that they tested it on, and the concentration that's listed as the LD50 value is the concentration that was lethal to 50% of that testing population. So it's a, if it's a fairly low number, you know it's pretty toxic and you want to be really careful handling it. The larger the LD50 value means the more the body or the more an organism could handle uh, before it reached a, a lethal dosage. A really good online resource for MSDS sheets are the MSDS that are posted by Flynn Scientific, uh, a distributor of chemicals and equipment to uh, lots of schools and universities. If you go to the address www.flynnsci.com slash MSDS hyphen search dot ASPX, you'll be brought to this search page and if you type in the name of a uh, substance that you want to find out uh, safety information for to see it's MSDS such as hydrochloric acid and then do search it will go through its database of products and pull up the MSDS for each of those and so you see here we get uh, several responses several results based on the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution uh, that we happen to be looking at. So we'll just go into the first one. And this will be our stock solution. It's a PDF format. And so when you look at this uh, material safety data sheet, you see uh, section one like we talked about, chemical name, uh, the contact information for the company, as well as that ChemTrack emergency phone number. Section two, this is where you get a description of what is in this particular substance. Um, here you'll notice that it's a mixture of hydrochloric acid and water. Um, some synonyms, concentrated hydrochloric acid, this would be also known as stock, uh, your stock solution. Um, muriatic acid is kind of a trade name, so if you go to a, a home supply company, uh, you're looking for something to clean your uh, sidewalks or your patio. Um, this is one of the things that you would use, muriatic acid. You'll notice that there is no chemical abstract service number for this particular substance, and that's because it's a mixture. It's not a pure material. 
uh, its composition can vary. This is 30 to 40 percent hydrochloric acid, 60 to 70 percent water. Um, if it were just hydrochloric acid without the water, or if we had a pure substance, then there would be a CAS number here. Section three, the hazards. Again, you look for um, characteristic words, toxic, uh, severely corrosive, okay, telling you particularly to what parts of the body. Pungent odor, so you know you don't want to get uh, real close to it when you're um, trying to detect the smell. Don't take a real big, big breath of it. Um, just sniff lightly with wafting if you're trying to detect an odor. Um, instead of the NFPA diamond, you have this Flynn at a glance. Again, the numbering scale here is 0 to 3. Um, instead of 1 to 4, the higher the number, the higher the hazard. So you have your health, which would be the, like the blue diamond, flammability, the red diamond, uh, reactivity would be the yellow diamond. And you also have some other categories. Uh, again, when you're talking storage, um, it, it's uh, a very hazardous substance, so you need to take uh, a lot of precautions in terms of storage. The first aid measures tells you what to do, okay, in case of inhalation, if you do breathe in too much of the fumes, if you get it in your eye, or if you get it um, on your skin, what to do. If you ingest some of it, uh, sometimes you want to induce vomiting, other times you don't. Um, so you would look here if you had that sort of incident. Some of the other sections again are for more for first responders. And then section nine, this is another one that's important, gives you a physical description of the substance, tells you what state it's in, what it's going to look like, if there's an odor associated with it. Uh, is it able to dissolve in anything? What's its chemical formula? What's its formula weight? Um, you may have other information like its pH, how acidic is it? Specific gravity, again, uh, density and specific gravity are related. So it will give you an idea of, um, you know, will it sink or will it float, depending on what other material you're comparing it to. So all of these sections tell you something different and specific about uh, the chemical. And depending on what you need to find out, uh, most information, especially as it pertains to safety and usage and storage, can be found in a material safety data sheet.